The following program is sponsored by What SF. The Bay Area lifestyle, defined by local people, places, and events. It's in constant motion. We discover the Bay Area's countless dimensions. Let's get to know the stories that make the San Francisco Bay Area what it is. This is what I said. Today on What SF, we cover an exclusive event that brings winemakers from all over the Bay Area together to meet the sophisticated San Francisco wine drinkers. We'll take a deeper look into the amazing sport of badminton and come along for the ride as we explore a bicycle company's unique approach to producing personalized products. Then, we open your eyes to the world-class service of a Bay Area headquartered company's dedication to supply every household with complete groceries, no matter what you're cooking. And as our local small business spotlight, let's uncover some treasures from the underworld of steampunk. Finally, a feature highlight that reflects the heart and soul of the Bay Area's commitment to the environment and our children's future. And now, on with the show. We started uh, San Francisco Vintners Market uh, three years ago. We've been running the event uh, two times per year, spring and fall. Spring is for new releases, uh, fall is for holiday sales, and uh, we've had some great success with wineries uh, using it as a venue to get in front of new consumers. Uh, we've done six so far, and uh, you know, we're, we're looking at other opportunities to do it in other places, but right now in San Francisco, it's a great event uh, for wineries to get out in front of uh, a new consumer. I like to try wine. I mean, I feel like wine and food, it's sort of like an adventure. So you try new things, you enjoy them, you get to be a little bit adventurous, like try like wine that you wouldn't normally taste. Actually, my favorite uh, is 24, started by Charles Woodson, who is an Oakland Raider uh, cornerback. I really enjoyed it because the 08 was very like smooth and, and creamy, and uh, also $10 of each of his bottles goes to the Children's Hospital, I think, in San Francisco. So it's, it's a great wine, it's a great cause. So that was really enjoyable. I love white wine. So I've had a, Moreno's a good choice. I love the, their wines normally, but I found a few others. Uh, there's Aubin Cellars. I, I like their wines, but um, I like sweet wines. So Rieslings and Gersaminers. So you think there'd only be wine here, but actually in the VIP, there's tequila, gins, tons of spirits, and they're awesome. Our goal is to give the smaller wineries a, a customer. A lot of them don't have actual tasting rooms. They definitely don't have wineries. So they're looking for a younger customer. They're looking for customers that want to you know, literally walk to wine country, which is what's possible here in San Francisco, and get in front of new brands. So looking for smaller players. A lot of them are garage yeast, making less than 500 cases total. And they, they put their love and, and soul into their wine and a lot of money. And this gives them an opportunity to get in front of those consumers and sell direct to them. We're a brand new micro winery. We're really small, we're family owned, and so we're just really starting to get our name out. And so this has been a wonderful opportunity to really expose our wine to a really large crowd of people. We are serving our wine in kegs. I think we're the only winery here today out of the 150 wineries here today that's serving wine in kegs, which is one of our um, kind of special offerings. Most wine tasting events, you, you can't you can't sell your wine at the same time as taste your wine. You have to have special locations for that, you know, like tasting rooms. Uh, and this is one of the rare events where you can actually sell your wine at the same time. And uh, for wineries that are they're up and coming and don't have a brick and mortar uh, location, you know, and don't have the cash flow to really work with that, uh, this is you know essential to really get our name out there. Um, really a low cost way to get uh, exposure for our wine. Uh, and I think it's good for everybody. There's never a dull moment when you take up a sport that can help you in life. That's the theme behind this school that aims to develop the skills and healthy lifestyle for sports enthusiasts of all ages and every level. If you're already good or just starting out, the Bay Badminton Training Academy will transform you to become the best and baddest that you can be.
Bay Badminton Center is a dedicated badminton facility in the Bay Area. We have three locations, one in South San Francisco, one in Burlingame, and one in Milpitas. We offer school for the kids, training for adults, a full-time pro shop, and full amenities for all of our members. The beauty about badminton is that you can uh, develop your hand-eye coordination and motor skills, fine motor skills. Because it doesn't just take a lot of strength and power, it also takes a lot of finesse to play badminton. We work very closely with all the local schools, the elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools to promote the sport of badminton. We have our full-time training academy at all three of our locations. We've got U.S. coaches, we've got coaches from China, from Indonesia. All these coaches have played professionally at one point in their lives. They've played for their country and they uh, still actively compete in tournaments. My name is Arnold Setiadi. I'm a coach at Bay Badminton. Coach the advance in the elite class. Back in the days, before Bay Badminton, there was no gym at all. Probably a recreational gym at South City or Westmore. But other than that, since Bay Badminton opened with 16 courts, it brings a lot of people to play and it's a nice facility. It's safe, it's not in hardwood, it's um, rubber. So you can't get hurt that bad. Well, uh, I started playing when I was about four years old. I never liked being at home with my mom, so I always go with my dad, he played. So ever since I played with my dad, I loved it. I started training when I was eight, loved it. Loved the uh, competition, loved competing, and get to meet other people, and also gets me fit. I started coaching here a year ago, and ever since that, I love it. I love working with the kids. It kind of reminds me of myself when I was young. On my first tournament, I, me and Annie received third place in doubles. So um, our coaches saw potential in us, and so we soon rise together. We're ranked two in singles and two in doubles. Without being coached, I would have been ranked really low because they support me a lot. Badminton is really fun because it helps you exercise and stay healthy, but um, it can be really tiring sometimes, but while you're training, it, you can have fun with your friends there, so like you always feel like you have a family during badminton. Ever since starting to learn badminton, my life improved by having more social friends and having exercises. Like badminton is like part of my life. Like besides education, badminton is probably the most important thing to me, and I'm really happy I learned it. We have uh, kids uh, that start at four, and we have grandparents all the way up to close to 90 years old. So this sport is very open to family families coming in and, and different generations playing together. Uh, badminton is a good exercise, but it also is fun. Coming up next, we also offer a service that we call Build Together. You actually come in and build your own bike. Oh, 
one in the Philippines. Hey. The KPFA Crafts Fair celebrates its 42nd year presenting original handmade crafts and art to the Bay Area on December 8th and 9th at the Concourse at 8th and Brannan, San Francisco. Visitors to the event will be regaled with outstanding jewelry designs, ceramics, artisan edibles, blown glass, wearable art, and so much more. The KPFA Crafts Fair, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, December 8th and 9th at the Concourse in San Francisco, a benefit for nonprofit KPFA Radio. You're watching What SF. Everywhere you look in the Bay Area, chances are you'll see someone on a bicycle. While riding a bike is fairly popular already, one company opened up in the heart of town where bicycles rule, but with a twist. Let's focus in on this local business's philosophy that can take buying your bike to the next level of personalized production. We visit Mission Bicycle Company. My first bike was a Huffy. It was all black with yellow accents and it was so cool. As a kid, a bike was a symbol of freedom. It just gave me this sense that I could go places that I, I never could go before. It wasn't really until out of necessity that I bought another bike as an adult. It was great. I'd forgotten how much freedom I actually had commuting by bicycle. I get to experience all of my senses, the sight, sound, smells, the wind in my face. And I have a complete unobstructed view. We sell bikes and gear specifically for city riding. This is the bike to go to the grocery store. This is the bike to go to work. This is the bike to go to the movies. This is a bike to visit friends across town. This bike was designed specifically for short urban rides. We're either getting people on bikes for the first time or we're getting people on great bikes and they're more excited about riding. I learned to ride a long time ago, probably when I was like four or five with my dad. When I first moved here, I was biking around everywhere, and it's so much more convenient than using public transportation. And then I got a motorcycle, and then kind of stopped using my bicycle. And then recently, I got in an accident and totaled my motorcycle. Luckily, I wasn't hurt, but I had to find a new form of transportation again. That's why I got back into biking. When Jake came in, he had kind of a sense, aesthetically, what he was going for, but he was very open-minded. He wanted to learn more. We went through the whole process, every single component on the bike, kind of walked him through it. I had a you know, kind of basic idea where I want to go with like a red and black theme. It was really cool and they had so many choices of colors and so many different components that I didn't even know you could get colors in. We also offer a service that we call Build Together. You actually come in and build your own bike with the guidance of a mechanic. Oh cool, that sounds really fun. I really like wrenching around and having a hands-on experience and so it was really cool that they offered that I could actually be involved in it. They just didn't give me a ready-made bike. I could actually, you know, hang out and grease everything and put it together myself. And then that My favorite part was putting the cranks on, you know, putting the chain on, actually watching the wheels start to spin and actually see it become a real bike. When I first got on that bike, it just felt perfect. It's really rewarding to see people come back from their very first ride on their new bike. It's just a smile from ear to ear. And what that usually means is that they're riding more, and they're more excited about riding, and 
that's contagious. It was really important to me to be able to customize it the way I did and pick the colors and components and everything because I'm going to be spending so much time with it and it's going to be such an integral part of my life that I really want to be able to have it the way I want. As long as I'm riding my bike, then at least I've got that one moment where I'm by myself, there's no emails, there's no text messages, there's no phone calls, there's just me sailing through the city. It doesn't seem like it should be such a big deal. It's such a simple machine, but it can have such a profound impact on our lives every single day. Let's hear from real shoppers as we take a closer look at a true Bay Area community member. This is 99 Ranch Market. 99 Ranch Market has set up service staff and trained professionals to assist you and ensure that your experience at any of their grocery locations is convenient, complete, and pleasant. They are sensitive to this emotion and their philosophy emphasizes professional customer care to ensure this result. And whether it is for a special occasion or for your traditional family holiday gathering, 99 Ranch Market has trained personnel on site who are ready to provide assistance. No matter what cuisine you grew up with or what new recipe you want to try, this is a complete and convenient grocery for you. 99 Ranch Market also works with local catering companies to fulfill their requirements. Consistent quality is very important when you are serving a large number of guests, so special attention is given to these requests. Their stores are designed to be very free-flowing, full of light and stocked with products sourced from local suppliers farmers and distributors as much as possible. Ready to go packaging of produce, fresh seafood and fine meat cuts are also prepared for additional customer convenience. Think of them as a very, very large version of your local neighborhood grocery. Today I'm at 99 Ranch Market because we're having some friends and family over and I want to make a nice steak and fish dinner for them. I'm not very good about planning menus so I'm going to wander through and fill in what I need. They have such a great variety here, I know I can get everything I need for a nice meal tonight. I really love the meat and fish section here. Everything is so fresh. Tonight I plan to make a beef tenderloin and I know they have a great selection of that here. I also want to make tilapia. I don't like to put a lot of seasonings on my fish and they have fresh fish here. I know that'll be good no matter what I put on it. I like to make all sorts of food. I make American food and all types of Asian foods. I have a lot of friends from different cultures and they give me recipes. I love to try them. I know when I come to 99 Ranch Market, they'll have all the ingredients I need no matter which cuisine I pick. I love the bakery here at 99 Ranch Market. I usually go to the bakery first, do my shopping, and then uh, leave the wife and go back to the bakery again. I love coming to 99 Ranch Market because I can get what I need here in the exact amounts that I need. I, I live alone and my apartment isn't that big, so I don't have a lot of space to store a lot of food or buy things in bulk. And this way I can get the exact amount that I can consume within a few days and I waste less food and then everything I eat is fresh. One of my favorite dishes to eat is either steamed or baked whole fish. So I like coming here to get my fish because they have a, a huge variety and there's a lot to choose from and it's always fresh. For the dish I'm preparing tonight, I'm using some very specific ingredients which are very hard to find in a regular grocery store. So I like coming here because I can usually find what I need here. You can visit any of the 14 locations in the Bay Area. You'll find that they strictly follow the same philosophy and customer care in each and every store. So the next time you are planning that menu or stocking up on supplies, there's probably a 99 Ranch Market not far away. You can make any occasion a special one by integrating international flair with your next family meal. Just like the Bay Area, 99 Ranch Market is a collection of every walk of life and multicultural exchange starts at the dining table. And now for our local business spotlight. Edwardian Renaissance is inspired by all things Neo-Victorian and steampunk. My designs try to reflect a retro future fantasy. I'm a local artist drawn to the Bay Area's amazing styles and Victorian history.
Check out my online shop on Etsy.com and look for Edwardian Renaissance. Coming up next... I'll tell you what, you guys want to use some of that wind to go sailing a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Gratin legumes with uh, uh, white fish on papillote. White fish on papillote. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna start with the with the onions, then zucchini, bell pepper, and then asparagus. Is there any reason why you're choosing this order? Absolutely not. That's a lot of olive oil. <laughs> and so you just want me to slice this? Like this? I'm going to crumble it afterward anyway. Oh, so you're just making me work for nothing, right? Yes, I... Greek and Italian cheese mixed together like that? There, there's never too much cheese. <laughs> never. I'm getting the zest. Okay. A couple of olives. Almonds, salt, pepper. I just had a suspicion that in France they always had to have something green on the plate. Well, it, it, it helps for the presentation, but in that case... If I um, tear this, why well, are you going okay. to destroy the dish? <laughs> Scare everyone. No, no, no. no it, it, has, it has to cook covered, completely covered. Mm. Perfect. Fantastic. Thank you for your hard work. Oh. Thanks everyone for watching. Yeah. And uh, see you. Yeah. Come on. See you. You're watching What SF. The Educational Tall Ship Project is building a 100-foot-long, historically-inspired wooden sailing ship. This vessel will be environmentally sustainable and will operate as a teaching vessel for thousands of Bay Area youth and adults. This will be the first wooden vessel of this size built in the Bay Area in over 80 years. We get to call, as it says, to the sea people of all origin for an ocean wilderness experience. Kids that live near the ocean and near the bay but take no part in what it is, we get to provide that. And we're going to turn all of you into sailors and oceanographers. Can anybody tell me what an oceanographer is? Yes. Uh, somebody that, I guess, uh, studies the ocean. Boom. You got it. I'm done. We want to uh, spark their curiosity, their wonderment, and what this world is all about. Even if it's just a three-hour sail, they will not forget. You can't help but open up minds of students and sailors alike. So I tell you what, you guys want to use some of that wind to go sailing a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. When you're on board, you're experiencing the dynamic of the boat as the sails fill and as we turn off the engine after getting out of the slip, and wind takes over. Uh, magical stuff happens when you get kids out in the outdoors, out in this beautiful bay and marine ecosystem that we have here in the Bay Area. The water here is completely green because of plants, tiny microscopic plants living in the water. You guys want to see what they look like? Yeah. You can actually use something like this to integrate the entire curriculum and create a really connected opportunity for students to learn. Well, I can just see them by the naked eye. Yeah. You're always looking for when the lights go on and when you have that hook where you know because they're so interested in something, they're going to learn. 
And that's what adventure can do for you. You just, the lights go on, you connect it to what you're learning in school, and suddenly you're a real learner, and you want to learn, and you want to apply what you're learning to the situations and the environments that you're in. Plankton make the majority of the oxygen in our atmosphere. Well, plankton make air. Yes, and that's why we can't live without them. The best part to me is the view. I like the view too, so. It's calm, but exciting at the same time, and you can kind of just get away from everything else. If they don't connect the young people with this, with their environment, it's hard to understand how they're going to be good stewards in the future. By having these experiences in nature, they get to understand that they're part of it. And they will become better stewards. Just imagine what a great ride it'll be on a tall ship, 130 feet, 40 feet long, kids up on the rigging, all over the deck. Awesome. We call it a green boat, we call it sometimes a living ship. It, it will produce its own water, take care of its own waste, create its own energy. Uh, it is its own island. So as we're building this boat, we're going to be able to project that via the media, uh, social networking, etc., to kids, whether they're home or probably in their classrooms. This is a community project, and that should draw together the community uh, throughout the Bay Area because this boat will be a resource for the whole Bay. If you give to it, it's a real legacy. We see this boat having a life of 100 years, and generations will go on. So to be involved with something that has that kind of long-range uh, impact on your community and on your families and on your generations, because it won't change. Uh, 50 years from now, the sailing is sailing. We want to give these kids here in our, in our Bay Area a chance to get on a boat like this. Thanks for watching this episode of What SF. Special thanks to all of our participants, producers, and sponsors. If you want to be on the show or give us feedback, email us, follow us, like us, or look us up. Until then, remember, if you're local, you should be vocal. Be the show. The preceding program was sponsored by What SF.